before we get into the main event of today's vlog, just a quick request from me to you. I'm in the process of trying to put together my first serious video where I'm looking at the effect of social media, YouTube, and access to things like tablets, smartphones on young children. If you have a young child or you are a young child, forget the if you are a young child bit, if, if you've got young children, I would be interested in your views on whether you think it's something that's completely unavoidable, that kids have access to this stuff because we either give it to them or they find some other way to get it, whether it should be controlled, if it should be controlled, who should be controlling it? Parents, schools, the internet, the combination of all of the above. I'm trying to combine together everyone's different views on it. I've done lots of research, I'm in the process of doing even more, and I want to put it together into like a short, sort of three to five minute video, just exploring the issue. I'm not going to try and come up with any answers, but I do want to try and raise awareness on the issue itself. So if you think you can help me out with that, hit me up down in the comments below. And now we'll get back to normal vlog viewing. You join me today, mid harebrained scheme. It's another weight loss idea because none of the stuff we're trying works. And I remember back to a time, in fact, let me sit down and tell you a story. Why is there no light in this place? It's supposed to be a studio. I remember a time not that long ago where I accidentally lost about three or four stone. Because I wasn't dieting, I wasn't controlling what I eat, but I was skint and I took all of the thought out of eating. So I got to the point where, because I had no money, it was while I was a student, I didn't have any money at all really. And rather than trying to live on super noodles on toast and have a horrible student fare, I wanted to come and eat good food. So I cleared out my freezer, spent almost all of my food budget in one day on a trip to Tesco, buying loads of fresh meat, fresh vegetables, all that kind of stuff. And then I cooked a month's worth of dinner and put it all in the freezer. And then each day, I would just take out the little foil tray that had that day on, cook it, and eat it. I couldn't afford to buy any extra food. I had a budget of maybe 15 pounds a week on top of that to buy a box of Weetabix, a loaf of bread, some milk, and not a lot else. So I didn't have the choice to, to not follow it. And because of the fact I'd prepared healthy meals in advance, the weight just fell off as a byproduct of what I was doing. Now, me and Anna have decided to try and simulate that because this whole being a grown-up about losing weight and trying to do it properly just doesn't work for me. I, I can't restrict myself. You saw that yesterday I went out and bought a big box of Krispy Kreme donuts. It's because they were there. They were 12 quid. Back in my student days, that would have been a week's worth of food. And we need to get back to that. We're obviously making a lot of life changes over the next few months where money is going to be a lot tighter anyway and we want to get back to this point where I'm batch cooking. We have a massive freezer out in the garage, which isn't really used for anything at all. I'll show you that in a second. It's basically just where we keep ice cream and lots of frozen stuff at the bottom that's sort of all frozen together into one big mass of ice with chicken nuggets scattered throughout it. It's barely ever used, but it could be used, and we could batch cook, for me and Anna, a month's worth of food, put it in that freezer. There might be a little bit of overspill into our actual freezer in the house that we use day to day, but I think we've got enough space to do an entire month's food and then massively reduce our weekly food budget. At the moment, we spend about 120 pounds a week just on our normal food shop. There's then additional stuff on top of that that we buy as well, factoring things like takeaways, um, an extra loaf of bread or bottle of milk here throughout the week. And we're probably, and the fact I buy my, my, I buy my lunch every day in Tesco, we're probably spending in excess of 150 pounds a week on food. And that has got to stop. There are some limitations to this. Andy's food, when he's eating, which he's still not, that's a story we'll get to as it develops, I guess. I don't really know what to say about that, he's just not eating. But when he does eat, he has to have his Walker's salt and vinegar crisps. At the moment, he has to have his Rice Krispies, he has to have his Diet Coke, he has to have his custard. His element of the food is probably about £40 a week just for him. But the remaining £100, £110 a week that we're spending, I reckon we can reduce that massively. If at the start of every month, we batch cook all of our dinners for the month. I've planned a massive spreadsheet for how it will work so that depending on when the girls are here and what we've got on and it tells me what to cook and when and what to have for dinner and when and it works and we're all happy with how it looks. We just need the freezer space to do it and the time to prepare it. But it would involve probably spending 
150, 200 pounds at the start of the month on food, cooking it all in one go, sticking it in the freezer and bringing it out each day, and then having an absolutely tiny budget for the remainder of the week, and just move the rest of the money out of the account, put it somewhere else so we can't access it. That's the plan. If it works, we'll save a huge amount of money and we'll get healthier. This is exactly how it happened at university. I started university over 22 stone. I graduated at about 17 and a half stone and I didn't diet or exercise at all during my time at university. I just forced myself into this batch cooking method. I think it's doable. I think we can work it again and we're going to use this freezer to do it. As you can see, massive freezer. I mean, it's dirty, it'll need a clean. It hasn't been used for a long time. It's just bits of loose food and horrible junk in there. So it needs a massive clear out, a massive defrost. I don't really know why we've kept it plugged in for so long. But I'm gonna empty that out, see if there's anything salvageable, for example. Though, muscle food. That was from a fad at some point. I don't know what year the 26th of May was from, but we've got some burgers there that might still be edible. I think probably the best bet is to just throw everything in there away though and start again from scratch. Watch this space. Oh, my hands are so cold. We, I can see the bottom now, but I don't know how much more of this I'm going to get out. It's completely solid there, look. So, I've unplugged it. I'll get those last bits out the bottom and then see how many days it takes for the rest of it to free up. I'm going to order some foil trays today so hopefully next weekend I can do a whole load of batch cooking that's the plan emergency we're at my dad's for dinner Andy is eating for the first time in like five days we only brought two bags of his crisps with him and a few twixes because he's not eaten all week so we thought it wouldn't be a problem but he's just sat down scoffed the first bag of crisps down we haven't even started our dinner yet and he's already halfway through the second bag so I'm being sent home let's hope my dad doesn't watch so I've just hit his car with my car door I've been sent home to buy more crisps. We could be having a break for everybody. And I didn't miss dinner! Ah, as I came in the door, that cactus, that, that cactus went on my bum. Don't touch that! Really, really, really hurt. Oh, geez. What is that? Don't put it on the table. Oh, the cactus went on my bum. What? I need. I don't. I'm just trying to decide whether to show you. I won't show you. I'm damaged though. And there's also bits of cactus dirt all over the floor now. Would you need to sweep up? Yes. Cactus dirt. Look at all that. You. Cactus dirt. Cactus dirt. Okay. I'm suing you. You shouldn't be such a buffoon. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I still maintain I swept it up to an adequate level. No, you didn't. There's still spiky things. What are those spiky things? Or drawing things. Yeah, but where have they come from? I don't know. I think they fell out the pot. Is that where drawing pins come from? Do drawing pins come from cactuses? <laughs> We're into the final 10 seconds or so of the competition that's been running across both channels over the last couple of weeks. As a reminder of what we're giving away, because we are going to draw the winner in a second, um, we're giving away this studio light thing. We're giving away a brand new green screen, a Logitech HD webcam, and an Ava Media 1080p capture card. So if we put all this back in the box, I'm going to have to take this box up before it goes in the post. Let's draw a winner. We had, in the end, 3,375 entries. Let's get that out of the way so you can... Whoa, that's not going to get out of the way. Um, I'll, you just have to trust me. Do you trust me? In fact, hold on. Through the magic of editing, we'll get the other camera out. And then I can be accused of no shenanigans. If we put this on this screen. So, are you going to focus on the screen? Focus, there we go. So, we're going to draw a winner from the competition, from the 3,375 potential winners, and the winner, competition, what? What do you mean the competition's not finished? Pretty sure the competition is finished, it was supposed to finish at nine o'clock. Let's refresh and try again. There you go, now we're drawing a winner, and the winner is Connor Sam Smith. 
There you go. Um, I'm going to have to blur out your email address, aren't I? But Connor, Sam Smith, congratulations. He's in Durham. He won for following me on Twitch, which is quite appropriate because it's a very helpful Twitch starter kit and I'm going to be back on Twitch myself come July. So, Connor, I'll get in touch with you via email now. So you should have an email from me before this vlog even goes live. Let me know your address, and assuming you are in the UK, which as it says Durham on there, I assume you probably are, I'll get this sent in the post once post offices open again on Tuesday. Congratulations, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Connor and to everyone else who entered. If you are watching this because you're new to the channel because of the giveaway, I hope you stick around, I hope you enjoy what you find. There is gonna be a new giveaway starting in the next couple of days. I've got two massive boxes one second. <laughs> Two massive boxes like this, this is just one of them, overflowing with toys, games, books, collectibles, t-shirts, so much stuff. I'm going to collect it all, there's some duplicates in there, so I'm going to sort it out into maybe four or five mystery boxes, do one a week for the next month, just get it quick fire, give away a whole load of stuff, create some space in the garage for old Kev, but keep an eye on the channel, it'll be on the same link, so when that opens up, I'll announce it properly on tomorrow's vlog and on the gaming videos tomorrow, but when that starts up, it'll, it'll be straight back in the same place at lelujo.fm slash giveaway, so good luck in those ones as well. And that's about it. If you've enjoyed today's video, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.